Welcome to Flow360 Training Webinars. In this session, we will be covering managing the workforce, teams and individuals. We will be looking at adding employees and setting up internal workforce teams. We will look at setting up individual personal remits and also team remits and explore how these relate to the automatic triaging of incoming issues and service requests. We'll explore the various options for teams to share access to incoming issues, service requests and works instructions. And we'll also look at how to use KPI options to look at performance, both for individuals and for teams, and some related report outputs. So, what do we mean here by the workforce? This session is focused very much on internal personnel rather than external service providers and contractors. So by workforce in the context of this session, we mean internal employees who are also members of defined teams or have individual work remits, enabling them to manage issues and receive orders through Flow360. We're going to start by adding a new employee. It's useful to know how to do this. I'm currently logged into Flow360 as a client admin user, and I'm going to go to my client home by clicking on the home button and selecting client as the option. Note that managers with access to personnel records in Flow360 can also do this. On the client home record, I can see a tab that says employees, and if I tap on that, I can see a sub-tab also called employees and other sub-tabs that detail employment contracts, teams, qualifications and training, supervisions and appraisals. So we want to add a new employee and we do this from the employees tab by clicking this little button here over on the right. And if I hover over the button you can see that it says add a new contact as an employee and all in one go, this creates the new contact, sets up a new employee record, sets up a default employment contract, and so on. And in fact, there's a little trick I'll show you here. If you hold down the Alt key, whilst you click on the button, it will pre-fill part of the information that you need to supply. So you can see by holding down the Alt key, it's automatically put in to this new employee contact dialogue, the name of the company, and the work address. So really all I need to do at this point is fill in the name, uh, a job title, and email if I want those uh, bits of information in Flow360. So we're going to add, uh, we're going to add Paul Williams as a new employee. And we'll put in an email address for him. and we'll click the confirm button and you can see what's happened that's set up the new contact and added paul as an employee and taken me straight to his new employment contract record so i can fill in additional details if i need to the only key bit of information really here is the fact that his employment contract is currently active so that he's showing as an employed status. So I don't need to do anything further with this record at this point in time but you can see from the screen that there are other things I could add here. Job title, role, I could assign Paul to a specific site. I can include it basic employment information such as a national insurance number, an employee reference and so on. I can even go down to the detail of looking at salary information and describing the number of hours that Paul works per day and so on. We're not going to do any of that today. We're simply going to jump back to his employee record just to confirm what's been set up. This is his employee record. Currently nothing, of course, added in terms of qualifications and training, timesheets or anything else. And finally, clicking this button here on his employee record will take me to his contact record where I can see this basic information, name and address, and I can add here on the comms tab 
telephone number information. Note that the email address that I added when I filled out the contact dialog has already been inserted and flagged as his primary email address. So having added Paul Williams as a new employee, back at the start screen let's return to my client home and look at Teams. On the Employees tab, Paul Williams is now listed, the new employee that we had just added, and let's click on the Teams tab to look at the teams that we've currently got set up. You can see a range of teams that are already established here on the King's College site, and if I click through to one of those, let's have a look at the maintenance team. The first tab I see is the list of team members. And if I want to add an existing employee to this team, I simply use the plus button on the team members tab list, click this, note that it confirms that only employees can be added as team members, so if you cannot see the relevant contact, make sure that they are actually an employee with a current employment contract rather than simply a contact. So we'll click yes, and we're going to find Paul Williams, he's actually down here at the bottom of the list, so I can click the little target button next to Paul's name and click confirm at the top. And that has added Paul Williams to this team. So now whatever the team setup comes into play as far as Paul is concerned and that will govern the things he can see and the things he can do and the ways that he will interact with other members of the team. So let's look now at setting up a brand new team. On the maintenance team record I'm going to click my home button because I need to get back to my client home page. So I'm going to client home. If I'm logged in as a manager, this would be my manager home page. And on the main employees tab, I need to click the teams sub tab. And here I see all the existing teams listed and we want to add a new team of porters. So I'm going to click the add new team button here at the top of the list and put in the name of the team. If I want to, I can make this a site-specific team if I'm running multiple sites, but in this case, I don't want to do that. I just want this to be a general team that can operate across all sites. So I'm going to click Confirm. And that has now set up the porters as a team. There are no team members currently, so let's look at adding an employee to the team. Let's add Paul Williams. I'm going to take him off the other team and just add him to the porters team. So we'll click Confirm on that. And we're going to change the lead or the primary contact. By default, it will put in the client name here as the lead. And we want to actually make Paul the primary contact or lead on the Porter's team. So I'm going to confirm this and say, yes, that is what I want to do. Again, I'm going to find Paul Williams on my list. If I've got a long list of contacts, of course, I can use the filter button up here to find an individual by name but I can see Paul's listed here, so I'm going to click the target button next to his name to drop him down to the bottom, click confirm there, and Paul is now the lead. Chris Johnson, I actually don't want. This is the main client admin account. I don't want Chris on the Porter's team, so to remove Chris from the team, I can simply click the delete button at the end, delete team member, remove Chris Johnson from Porter's, yes, that's what I want to do. That doesn't do anything else as far as Chris is concerned. It simply takes him off as a member of the team. It doesn't affect any of his other history or anything else uh, in the way that he interacts with Flow360. And if I want to add additional members to the Porters team, then of course I can click the plus button and add further members. So having added Paul Williams and set up a new team and added Paul to the team, Let's now have a little look at remits, both for individuals and for teams. Remits exist to describe the working relationship between you as an employer and a service provider, an internal member of your workforce. They're also used to describe your working relationships with external service providers and contractors. We're gonna start by looking at remits for an individual and we're going to find Paul Williams' record in order to do that. The fastest way to find a person is simply from the front screen to type in as much of the name as will identify that person uniquely. 
and hit return on the keyboard and that jumps me directly to Paul Williams record. Now note that you cannot set up remits for an individual until they have a service provider's user account in Flow360. Until that is set up, the remits tab simply won't show. Note that these three ticks on Paul's contact record confirm that he is a service provider, so he does have a service provider user account. He is a user, of course, because he has a user account, and he also has some access to your site and that's confirmed with the access tick. So let's have a look at the remits for Paul. We need to set up remits in order that Paul can be in a position to show up as a potential target for receiving new help desk issues as they come in and also as the person that works instructions can be assigned to and we need to decide and then specify in Flow360 what those remits are. Now there is a shortcut for internal employees and if I simply click the button here that says add global set, add a default set of remits for Paul, it will give us the basics very quickly. So add a default set and this just confirms what's going to happen. Remits non-site specific will be added for all regions, all work types and a default cost range of zero to five thousand pounds. You should check all remits, tab lists, and adjust these where necessary. So we're going to go ahead and set up those default remits for Paul. And you can see on the geographical remits, he covers all regions. Now, if you have multiple sites spanning different counties in the country, for instance, you can be specific about which areas an individual employee can cover. Uh, as far as work remits are concerned, again, he's got simply two ticks here, one that says, he has a remit for all works categories and that he has a remit for all help desk work categories specifically. Now that means he can be assigned to manage help desk issues and he can also be issued with works instructions for any type of work activity. If you want to be more specific about the remits that apply to an individual, then rather than giving them a global set, let's just take that out, remove that remit and we're going to add manually, rather than saying all or all help desk, we're going to say specifically uh, Paul perhaps does electrical works. And if I simply add that, that then limits uh, the type of issues and the type of works orders that can be sent to Paul to those that cover electrical works. I'm going to remove that again. And you can do this at will. You can change the remits for a person whenever you need to, and that simply adjusts your working relationship with them. It has no other detrimental effect, uh, and it doesn't affect any of their history with you up to that point. So I'm going to add in the global set that covers everything and click Confirm. Let's just have a look at the Cost Remits tab as they apply to an individual. And you can see, again, by default, the global set has set up a cost range of works that can be sent to Paul of zero to 5,000. That's a relatively small value. It covers uh, a lot of work that is internal. For external contractors, particularly your main contractors, you would want to set that value considerably higher. The last three controls here, settings for Paul as an individual, determine whether or not he, as an individual, will work on a cost plus basis. Cost plus would allow Paul, as a service provider, to indicate overhead and profit elements and so on. You can immediately understand that that is more applicable to external contractors and service providers than it is to members of the internal team. So we'll leave that alone on no. Uh, Flexi contract similarly would allow an external uh, provider or contractor to add additional items or to make amendments to works as they're in progress. Generally, you might not want internal members of teams to be able to do that. Self sign off, however, can apply internally or externally. And if it is set to yes, essentially that means that when Paul receives a works instruction and he indicates the work is complete, that that will run the second stage sign off all in one go and sign it off completely. 
If the self sign off remains on no as it is at the moment, then when Paul receives a work's instruction and he indicates that work is complete, it will simply be marked as completed and a message will go to the relevant manager or surveyor to say, this work is completed, can you inspect and sign off and perform that second stage sign off. So that's a brief examination of the remits as they apply to an individual employee. So let's now have a look at setting up remits for a team. Again, I need to go to the team home card. So if I click home, go to client home, and then to the employees tab and the teams sub tab, I can go to the team setup. So let's have a look at the Porter's team that we have just set up. Paul Williams is the only member of the team currently. And what I want to do is look at the setup for the team as a whole prior to adding other members on the team. Let's just deal with these options quickly one at a time. So the team email address is an email address that you can add. Very often we find that teams have collective email addresses or a team email address that can be used that they all have access to. And if that email address is entered here on the team record, then that email address will be used to send messages relating to new issues that have been assigned to the team. And that means they all will have access to that information by email outside of Flow360, in addition to having access to the information in Flow360. There's also the option here of storing a team telephone number uh, so that that information is available in Flow360 to those people who can access the team information. Now let's have a look at the shared access options here. Shared access for teams essentially means that you can set up a team of people and allow them all to have access to issues that have been assigned to the team, no matter who the issue is assigned to. And it also allows you to assign issues to the team without having a person specifically in charge of that issue in order to let the individual members of the team self-select by clicking the accept button on the help desk issue as they arrive. So in order to allow that to happen, all I need to do is tick the box that says shared access. And that means that any member of the team now will have access to any issue that comes in that is assigned to the Porter's team. Now let's look at some of the other controls underneath the shared access tick. Visibility only means that team members will see all team issues but will not be able to use the accept button to assign issues to themselves. They would have to wait for the team lead or a manager to assign issues to them. Nonetheless, they're able to see what other members of the team are doing. The hide shared unless filtered option means that issues assigned to other team members are initially hidden from the list view, but can be found by the user using the filter button at the top of the list. That simplifies day-to-day -day operations by restricting their initial view just to the issues that relate to them directly. The initially assigned to primary slash lead option means that incoming issues assigned to the team are always also assigned to the lead of the team as the person in charge. If this is not checked, then issues that are sent to the team will simply be allocated to the team with no specific individual in charge and team members can either self-select if that's available to them or wait for issues to be assigned directly to them. The final option here, all team members can manage all issues, needs to be used with extreme care and is normally only used in very specific circumstances. Essentially, it allows any member of the team to act as if they are in charge of that issue and send it on, sign it off, manage the issue in any way, regardless of whether they are the person currently assigned as in charge of the issue. Now onto the next set of controls here. The hide assigned option on the right 
means that issues will be hidden from other team members once an issue has been assigned to somebody else. The Help Desk Issues proxy option, if that's checked, will allow any member of the team to log issues on the Help Desk on behalf of another member of staff. And that can be useful if issues are raised in some other way and staff are not able to log on and put the issue onto Flow360 themselves. The target any team member directly option allows that team member to be listed, or in this case all members of the team, to be listed directly as targets when entering a new help desk issue in order to target the issue directly at that person as the person in charge from the outset. Typically, the capability to do that is restricted to managers and senior users of the system, but can be opened up to general users by using a manager preference. Now we move on to the work type remits that apply to the team. We've already had a look at remits as applies to an individual. And the option here on the team setup allows us to specify how those remits or whether those remits are used in order to inform the activities that the team can undertake. If we tick this box, use member work type remits, then the remits that are listed on this next tab, Help Desk Issue Work Type Remits, will be a collection of all of the remits assigned to the individual members of the team. Whereas if this is unchecked, then you can use this tab, Help Desk Issue Work Type Remits, to set up specific work type remits that apply globally to the team, regardless of the individual remits that may be set up for individual members of the team. The log team work types only option is a restriction and if that is checked it will mean that members of the team are only allowed to put new issues onto the Flow360 help desk that match work types that belong to the team. They will not be able to log issues for any other type of work. And the final option on the right hand side also needs to be used with great care. Uh, it allows you to set up the team so that the team members will all see each other's outgoing issues as well as issues that are incoming for the team. In specific circumstances this can be useful. An example would be the ICT support team needing to see whether other members of the team have already issued a request to the porters, for example, to set up a space for a particular event. Let's now have a look at some controls that exist on the Team Members tab and are an extension of the preferences that may have already been set up for the team on the Setup tab. The first of these, with the T at the top of the column, allows you to say that this individual team member can be directly targeted as the person in charge of a new help desk issue. And because you can do this on this list person by person, you can set these controls for some trusted members of the team and not for others until you feel that they are ready to take on extra responsibility. The S column allows you to say that this individual team member is allowed to self-allocate new issues when they add them to the help desk. So they can put a new issue on the help desk and assign it to themselves all in one go. The orders tick means that the team member is allowed to issue direct orders from any issues that have been assigned to them. And these could include orders that go to external contractors regardless of whether that team member has manager capability more generally or not. So you can extend some manager-like capability to individual team members, but only within the context of issues that have been specifically assigned to them. The SO sign off column allows you to indicate that that person, that member of the team is also allowed to sign off any orders that they themselves have issued. And the final option here in the column with the plus at the top 
allows you to say that this member of the team is also allowed to sign off any direct orders issued by any other member of the team. So these controls on the team members tab allow you to set up individual controls for specific members of the team that are in addition to the team setup that is set up more generally on the setup tab. Let's now explore where some of those team setups and remits come into play with regard to targeting and assigning help desk issues. I'm logged into our demo as a manager and I need to show you a couple of pertinent preference settings. So I'm going to the preferences for this manager account and I'm going to the general help desk settings. And I want to look first of all at this option here, target help desk issues based on, and the choices you have are either just issue type or issue and work type. Now, if we select issue and work type, then the remits that we've set up for the individual teams come into play with regard to the automatic targeting of help desk issues. So if I go back to the start, and I start logging a new help desk issue for King's College. You can see by default, for an issue that is simply a failure, it's going to be sent to Tim Jones. And if I choose um, catering service, for example, so I'm changing the issue type here, then that will be targeted at catering. Let's go back though to failure and see what happens if I change the work type option here to something specific. So in this case, let's select electrical. And you can see now that the target has automatically been switched to Edward Lee on the electrician's team. Similarly, if we come down, say, to plumbing, that will divert the issue to Janet Williams on the plumber's team. So those remits, those work types that have been set up for the individual teams now come into play in terms of automatically targeting issues based not just on the issue type itself, i.e. whether it's a failure or catering or premises or grounds, but also on the work type that is selected on the work type drop down. So let's now have a look at assigning an issue directly to individuals and also to teams. I'm going to go to my help desk issues list and look at the top issue, the most recent one that's come in, which is currently assigned to Peter Anderson. I want to reassign this issue to the electrician's team. And in order to do that, I click the button next to the team and I choose the electrician's team from the list and I click OK. Note that Peter Anderson has now disappeared as the person in charge. He's not on the electrician's team, and this issue has now been assigned to the electrician's directly. Any member of the electrician's team could then accept the issue directly to self-assign it, or they could wait for the issue to be assigned to them directly by the team lead or a manager. If, on the other hand, I want to assign this directly to an individual, then I can do that from here by saying yes and selecting the person from the list. Let's assign this to Paul Williams and we'll click confirm. And we can see that issue now assigned to Paul Williams. He's not part of the electrician's team and therefore the team allocation has now been cleared. Finally, in this session, I want to look at one or two quick reporting options and KPIs as they relate to teams and individuals. And again, I'm going to go to my list of help desk issues, although note that many of these things can also be done in relation to works instructions. A useful thing to be able to do is just to see how the current set of issues are split amongst teams and individuals. And by clicking the help desk list button from the front screen, what I see, of course, is my list of active issues. And if I simply go to a report option, I can say, give me the help desk issues by team and person in charge. 
click the confirm button and that then summarizes that list of active issues and gives them back to me sorted out team by team and then person in charge by person in charge. And that's a very quick and easy way of getting an idea of who is dealing with which issues that are currently open because we started with the active list. And that's also a good example of using a report output in Flow360 in order to summarize current data. I don't actually want to keep the report, I don't want to send it out, I don't want to export it. I simply want to use the report option as a way of summarizing some of the things that are going on currently. Another way that I can find of the active issues, which issues are being dealt with by a particular team, of course, is to use the find panel in order to filter the information. And in order to do this and restrict this list to the open issues only, I'm going to set this option to reduce. So that will mean it will keep the list of active issues listed and then sort them or filter them further. So in this case, I want to look at teams assigned to the electricians. Well, I don't need to type in the whole name of the team, that's enough to get me the list. And I can see of the active issues, there are three assigned to the electricians. So that's another way in which you can quickly find a set of issues that are allocated to a specific team or indeed to an individual. Let's reload our active list of issues. And let's have a quick look at one or two KPIs, key performance indicators. Now on the help desk issues list, if I click on the KPIs button, I get some choices and I can look at issues open on one date compared with issues open on a different date or issues open for more than 30 days. So issues that are hanging around for longer than we'd like on a particular date as compared with six months earlier. We can also look for issues closed during a particular time range. So in the past month or in the past two weeks versus the average number of issues closed during that same period. And finally, we can look for the percentage of issues that are being closed on target during a particular period versus the average percentage closed on target over a date range. So let's just look at a couple of examples quickly. Let's start with issues that have been open for more than 30 days. And we want to compare today, the current date, with three months ago. And I can ask just for the figures. So I click the Find button and I get this report back. So issues open for more than 30 days on the 10th of December, 358. Issues that have been open for more than 30 days today, 388. So an increase, we have an 8.38% increase in the number of issues that are being left hanging around for more than 30 days. So that's probably not something we'd be particularly pleased about. And let's just look quickly at one other example. So again, I'll click the KPIs button. And what I want to look for is close rates. So the percentage issues closed on target during a particular period. And what I want to look at is the last three months. And again, I just want the figures. I don't need a report output. Just give me an idea of what's going on. And if I look at that result, again, not one I'd be particularly pleased about. The percentage of issues closed on target during the three months ending the 10th of March, so that's today, 20%. The average percent issues closed on target during each three-month period starting from a year ago is 50%. So that is a 60% reduction in the number or the percentage of issues that are being closed on target during the past quarter. Well, that's about it for this session. Don't forget the built-in user guide, which you can access by clicking the question mark button here on the main screen or in the sidebar of many other screens in Flow360. The user guide is structured as a series of walkthroughs 
guiding you through processes and providing additional background information. Look out for more tutorials on our YouTube channel, search YouTube for Flow360 UK, or click the button on our website landing page and that will take you directly there.